Welcome to AP Biology. Today I want to talk about aerobic cellular respiration in prokaryotes. So we've talked a lot about um, aerobic cellular respiration in mitochondria. So it's really the same stuff in, um, in bacteria. So if you remember, if you uh, think about the early evolution of mitochondria, they started out as bacteria, right? And so there were bacteria that were really good at cellular respiration. And a eukaryote came along and uh, said, wow, you look delicious, and it engulfed it. Endo uh, that's the endosymbiosis theory. And so here is that eukaryote that now, lucky eukaryote, that now has um, a symbiotic relationship, mutualistic relationship with with uh, the bacteria in here. And so why does it have uh, this? Well, th this evolved eventually right into mitochondria. Mitochondria. So the inner membrane had, event had originally come from the bacteria. So the bacteria can, the free living bacteria can still do this, right? Can still do this same process. So when we think about all the parts of cellular respiration in the, um, eukaryote, it happens, you know, a lot of it happens in the mitochondria, but that would just happen in the bacterial cell itself. So glycolysis, that happens in everybody's um, cytoplasm, right? Whether it's bacteria or not. Krebs cycle, pre-Krebs and Krebs, they happen in the mitochondrium, right? Right in, in here, right? But that just happens in the bacterial cytoplasm. And then the electron transport chain, that all happened in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Well, bacteria don't have mitochondria, right? They actually are more like mitochondria than, than our cells are. So they actually have the inner, the uh, electron transport chain in their only membrane, right? They don't have a mitochondrial membrane because they're about the same size as mitochondria. They don't have any internal membranes. So their electron transport chains are right in their only membrane. And then the um, chemoosmos chemiosmosis stuff, the uh, ATP synthase molecule, that is also just embedded in their only membrane. So the proton gradient that happens with mitochondria, do you remember how mitochondria end up making a proton gradient um, be in their intermembrane space, right? So the proton gradient, wow, I'm struggling here. The proton gradient happens right, out, right between <laughs> their inner and their outer membranes. Wow, you guys, you just have to, there it is, right outside of the, right between the inner and the outer membranes, right? So in, in bacteria, it just happens here outside their cell. And so you might wonder, well, why don't these protons just diffuse away? And I think the answer is because they are attracted to more negatively charged materials in here. So they still have a proton gradient, but it's not protected by another membrane outside. So there was a man uh, who figured all this stuff out. Uh, his name is Peter Mitchell. You do not need to memorize that. But I, want, I do want you to think about how every little thing that you learn in this class and really in any of your science classes came from somebody's, probably somebody's whole life wor lifetime work, um, or at least some really cool experiment that someone figured out. So he really wanted to understand um, cellular respiration in eukaryotes but he didn't use eukaryotes. Instead, he thought it would be easier to use a model organism, something a little bit simpler. So instead he started out with bacteria. So he used a bacterial model to do his studies. And so he had a beaker or a container of some type. And in that he put uh, bacteria. And then he didn't give them any food. Isn't that kind of mean? But he did give them protons. So in other words, it was an acidic environment. Because remember an acid, like for example, hydrochloric acid will release hydrogen plus whatever else. These hydrogens are what makes it acidic and those hydrogens are protons, right? They're the same thing, a hydrogen ion and a proton. So anyway, he had the little bacteria in here um, sitting in a proton uh, in, a, in an acidic environment, which means they had lots and lots and lots of protons all over the place. And he found that even when he didn't give them food, right? They couldn't, be, without food, they can't, put electrons on NADH and they can't give their electrons to the electron transport chain. So even with no electron transport chain, they were still able to make ATP. Kind of cool, right? What a, a brilliant experiment. So a little bit more evidence for this whole mechanism. If you poke holes in the inner mitochondrial membrane, what is that going to do? Well, 
if you can remember, here's your inner mitochondrial membrane, right? Wow, that's a really bad picture of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And then here is the outer mitochondrial membrane. You might remember that the protons, the protons end up, can you see the yellow? Um, the protons end up in here, right? In the intermembrane space. And so if you put, um, if you give them some chemical that will poke holes in it, So if you poke holes here, 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 what happens is those protons uh, get dissipated. Um, some of the protons will come in, right? So you're going to have no difference between the inside and the outside. The whole thing will have protons spread through the whole thing. So you'll have no proton gradient, no potential energy, and uh, the whole process doesn't work anymore. So poking holes in the inner membrane makes the whole process of making um, ATP not work. Um, another piece of evidence is that there's a low pH in this intermembrane space. So the place right, um, right here ends up with a low pH. And then another idea is if you put mitochondria, you could either remove the outer membrane or it even works without removing the outer membrane. If you put mitochondria even in a low pH, they'll still produce ATP without, um, without any food because I guess the the um, protons can diffuse through this membrane but they can't diffuse through this um, they can't diffuse through this inner membrane unless they're going through ATP synthase or being moved by the electron transport chain so if you give them an acidic environment the same thing as Peter Mitchell found with um, with with bacteria works they still remain um, you know they can they can still make ATP